everybody, this is Paula Geffrey from Creating Purpose with Paula, and I welcome you to the Spanglish World Network, Hard Network, and Spanglish Sport World channels 249, 250, 251 here in Zingo TV. Please remember to download Zingo TV on the respective app stores. When you download it, please rate it, you know, rate it and let us know how we're doing our job. You can find Zingo TV in Google Chromecast. Amazon Fire, Fire TV Stick, Roku, Roku Stick, and all smart TVs from 2016 and forward. Thank you all for being here today. We have a wonderful, wonderful visitor with us today. She is Shayla Thielen. She is the president of training, like vestibular training service. So welcome, welcome to the house. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. This is so wonderful. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Paula. This is so exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're so welcome. So please, please let us know how did you became the president of the vestibular training service? So I've been doing this forever. Like we've owned the company for 28 years. And in 2020, we expanded it into more of the general public, which was a terrible time to expand your company. You know, 2020, there's some things going on in the world then. And, and, and I talk about I'm so coachable. But I would, everyone's like, don't do it. Don't expand. Just wait. Just wait till the pandemic gets over. And I'm just like, ah, we're going to do it anyway. And we did. So I've been running the company for, oh, geez, almost three decades. Yet the expansion into the general public has been a monster project. Wow. So tell us, okay, what is a, a the vestibular system for some of our beautiful audience are here that have no clue what that is? So this is actually an amazing model of your vestibular system. And what it is, is it's right inside your ear. So like inside your ear, there's like your eardrum, you know, that leads into this, these three semicircular canals that then go off into the cochlea. And a lot of people have heard of the cochlea. It's kind of a nice curvy that, that is more that leads the information in. But these three semicircular canals really are the main processing. And the word vestibular comes from vestibule. So the vestibule is the entry to your home. Your vestibular is the entry to your brain. So it's really how your eyes and ears process all this information around you. And I'm going to tell you that when it works great, it, life's great. You're just fine. But when it's not working well, oh man, I'm just going to say your life is crap. Okay. Like, like your balance is off. Your vision is off. You're often, you get, you get pukey, you vomit, you know, and this whole thing is just tied to that whole balance system. And the balance is everything. Yes. Well, and now teach us about what is vestibular training? So we come from the sports world and I always talk about, I'm a master figure skating coach. And if you really look at figure skaters, they're amazing athletes. Uh, you know, look past the pretty dresses and look past the music <laughs> and possibly the falls, but they're amazing athletes that can really balance and turn and spin at incredible velocity and not get dizzy. So we started really looking at our athletes in figure skating because they could do things that other sports couldn't. So we just kept expanding and looking at how we trained athletes compared to how other sports trained. And nobody was training this vestibular system like we were. So in expanding our company and, you know, and coming from figure skating and moving into the general public, we really realized how many people could benefit from spinning and, and vestibular training and, you know, getting those three canals to really work together. And where it brought us, it, I'm just so excited. I always kind of get excited about this, about how you can really train it and regain balance. So we work with a lot of people post-concussion. We work with the aging population. Uh, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. We work with a lot of former athletes um, that are struggling, especially post-concussion, like NFL guys, NHL guys, um, pro motocross, pro rugby. Uh, it, it's fun to see the expanse. But on the other side of the group, we're also working with children with autism. And we're also working with 
an, an average kid, much less a child with dyslexia or ADHD, all of those things are, are really still connected to that vestibular system. That is like unbelievable. <laughs> you know, that a vestibular system has to do with so many things that, you know, we don't it's, really, I, I didn't know. Yeah, it's everything. And I talk about the education process that we've been really creating for people too. I always talk about, we all learned to count calories and we learned to count carbs and how many steps we took a day, you know. You know yes. We, it was all an education process. But at the same time, the the really the information coming out on the vestibular system is fascinating. Over 49,000 papers have already been published on vestibular on pubmed.gov. And they're just, they just keep publishing. It's fascinating to see all the ways that that vestibular really affects people's lives. So how were you curious? Like, how were you training your team to to get better balance. Like, I'm curious, like, did you know, did you, like from school, from a research that you worked on, how did it, like, how did it come to your life? Well, so I've been doing this for figure skaters for decades, but we started asking more and more questions. And I worked with several, uh, multiple Olympic coaches throughout the world. And we talked about like, how come this athlete made it and this one didn't? And how, how did this kid get really good? And this kid should have gotten good, but they didn't. Or this kid quit, you know, well, why'd they quit? You know, and so we we started asking questions. And, and I think all good coaches do that. They were, we're like, why did this work? And why didn't this work? And, mm -hmm. and we really started coming back to the kids that got the neuro training were the kids that really excelled beyond their sport and academics and their lives and decision making. All of that neuro training really affected the children in amazing ways. So we started looking at that and how could we help more children and how could we, and then the group just kept expanding to ultimately everyone with a brain <laughs> benefits from the stimular training. So we're, we're really excited about that. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Learning about the vestibular training. What's the process of the training? Like how many sessions someone needs? It, it Okay, so this is the exciting part. After doing it even one time for five minutes, it has, you can instantly feel it. And my favorite example is it's, it's really a spinning table and you have two cho choices. It can, it's an electric spinning. It looks like an electric Lazy Susan. I can show a video here in a second, okay? But but the, the electric spinner, um, you can either stay on it or you can fly off of it with a pulley system, which which is shocking videos when I show those. But you, you have two choices, but really the, the instant you do it, you can feel it. And the best way I can describe it is with a sound effect of that your brain goes, ooh, you know, uh, and you can feel yourself come to center. There's almost like a Zen to it, but it really is part of that whole balance system of how those eyes and ears process back into the brain. So people have results that last about three days. So they work with me one time, only five minutes, and then it lasts about three days. So most people work with me two or three times a week, but then at the six to eight week mark, it really sticks. So at that point, the nice part is they can drop down to once every other week, once a month, you know, it, wherever they need it. But the, but everyone loves it and they enjoy it so much. There's a nice little dopamine load to it. So <laughs> people are like, oh, I can't wait to do it again. And so really when I tell people they don't need to do it so much, they still want to do it. <laughs> Yeah. So, so they, they they still keep doing it. And I'm sev I'm multiple, multiple athletes that have been doing this for years. And the children really do it every single day. And I'm told that the children in Russia uh, with, oh, my goodness, talk about elite skating programs. They, they're doing it three times a day. You know, so like, yeah. obviously, if it's great, let's do it more. Um, yeah. Which is a little bit of overkill. But <laughs> in the wow. same time. In the same sense, it's great. So, yeah, so most people just two or three days a week. But really what we love about it is it's just that five minutes. So you go in, you spin your three sets, and you're done. And, and you're done. You yeah, you can feel it. So, uh, so perfect. Oh, so 
Are we still? Are you going to show us a video? I think something. Yeah, popped. I guess I'm going to show some video now. Here we go. And and I, okay. here we go. I, I, it's kind of weird. Oh, let's see if can you see it? Here's my little skater here. Hold on. So here, here's my I, athlete. Do you see? I it? can't. I can't see it. I don't know if Eduardo. Do you see it? Okay. Here. Oh, I, I, oh no. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I, I press more buttons to try and share more. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't so <laughs> many buttons. Okay. Oh my gosh. Let's see if it comes up here. Um, oh goodness. So it's playing on my side and it says I'm sharing my screen. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Dad, I don't see it. Eduardo, if you see it, you can message me. Maybe I'm the one that doesn't see it, but I would like, I would love for the audience to also see it because it's yeah, pretty neat. No, he's not seeing it either. It's showing on my oh. end. Oh no, oh no. It's showing on screen, my he said. Okay, oh no, but it's it's showing on my screen. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. It's moving all around on my screen. Oh goodness. Ugh. Yeah, we're not seeing it on <laughs> our side. Our viewers are not are not seeing it. How how ooh, yet? Maybe. Yeah, we can try again. Okay, yeah, I'm just I just keep playing it through here. It's so weird here. Uh, screen, and then it's the little. Oh goodness, it shows the big screen. Oh goodness, why won't it play? Ugh. I guess I'm gonna have to send everyone to my YouTube. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll send them to. I mean, we <laughs> tested and we were able to see her students spinning, so we thought, yeah, she can share the video. But you know, we had a lot of technology. <laughs> There's just oh. too much technology there. I'm so sorry. So you're good. Everyone can just see it. And I'm telling you, it's fun to watch. And you can kind of even just see in the background, too. Um, we've got our rail spinner. There's my rail spinner that you can just stand on. And then the other one, you can kind of just see here in the background. I kind of have the harness hanging. And then it's got the electric spinner there in the base. That it's just basically an electric spinner that you stand on. And it it spins you. But the fun part, when you go to see my YouTube videos, and, and we can probably insert some videos at the end from the main page, but the fun part is the kids are all not dizzy. Like, I can train the dizzy out of you, which, what? <laughs> yeah, I can train the dizzy out of you. And that's been the fun part in training my mom. So even my mom at 78 years old, she works with me once a week, just five minutes, and um, she's not falling. And she used to fall a lot prior to working with me. And now she's she's not falling. And she just did a European trip, like one of those little bus trips through <laughs> the UK and Scotland and on the bus and off the bus and cobblestones. Europe's very unlevel, you know, in the bus, out of the bus, you know, Stonehenge, it's spongy, you know, and my mom didn't fall in three weeks. So it's really exciting. Amazing. Yeah, it is. It is really amazing how it's like athletes benefit from it. You know, rehab if you're in rehab, because I think I read that if anybody had a stroke, you know, concussion, you're also working with military or you are in the process of working with military. I, mean, I heard. <laughs> uh, so so I'm really close to a, a official military contract. I've worked with many soldiers uh, in my private training room, but it, it's it's really exciting to see. Um, we're really close to a military contract. Yeah. <laughs> that was joke. You'll, you'll never see me again. You'll come back and share with us uh, about it. But also, you know, kids with autism, sensory, you know, got kids that are very sensitive to hearing, you know, the smelling, the touching, all that stuff. So that's amazing. And aging, you know, it benefits aging. Well, and I have, I have so many, so I don't share a lot of my videos of the children with autism. I just feel like it's too personal, you know, I, and I have permission to share them and I've got all the releases and I, and I never share them just, they just feel so personal to me. But the children, um, actually at our last event, we were actually at the Mary Coriola Center in, uh, Buffalo, New York, with, you know, hundreds of children with autism and, and really profound autism. And my head engineer who was with me that day, and we had the children on the rail system and we had them, you know, doing some fly motions. The children woke up it is the best way I can describe it. They really woke up. They were alert. Um, many were nonverbal and talked about wanting more. 
And, oh. and the amazing part is the children with autism never get dizzy. You can, you can spin them a hundred times and where you and I would be vomiting. Okay. <laughs> the normal population couldn't handle it. These children can just keep spinning and spinning and they, and they love it. But there's something about us spinning them versus them spinning themselves. There's just a whole nother level that, that happens within the brain. And the other piece too is our projects are really standing. So there's a big difference between sitting and learning and standing and learning. That is two very, very different things. So with that, the children it was so lovely. My head engineer had to leave the room because he was he was tearing up watching the kids. Oh, you know, he, he yeah. really had worked with children like that. And it was it was really an exciting opportunity for us to to work with the children and see the changes. And and they're even moving forward with us with several research projects because the it was it was profound. It was wonderful. That is amazing. And the beauty of it and is there is not an OR. They don't have to go to an OR. There is no medication from what I read, right? There is no, you know. No, it's like not five invasive. minutes. It's five minutes. You're in, you're out. You know, five minutes. It's non-invasive, which we think is really important too. I just worked with a little boy in Boston uh, who was 13 years old. And the poor child just shook from the ADHD shook from it you know and after i i spun him for his five minutes and and I'm, I'm really gentle about it the kid had a wonderful time but he when i finally set him down he goes oh oh is this what i'm supposed to feel like and the shaking had stopped and the kid just looked around and then he hugs me and is like uh, you know this is oh and i was just like Oh, buddy, you know, yeah, this is what your brain's supposed to feel like. So the wow. kid's on our whole program now, and it's really fun. Uh, we'll be following him for the next several years to see how he can progress. Although I have one really interesting thing about ADHD. Okay, ready? so I'm going to share with Okay, oh, I'm all excited. So um, we work with a company called Body Tracks, and it's just a balance mat. You just stand on the balance mat, two feet, and we do like 10 seconds, eyes open. And then I reset the computer and then we do 10 seconds, eyes closed. And how you should score is a great score with your eyes open and a lesser score with your eyes closed. So it makes total sense. But how my ADHD kids and my concussion people, they score backwards. Both of them do. I can't tell which one it is. So if I'm just testing you and I don't know your background, I can't tell if it's a concussion or ADHD because you're backwards. So you score horrible with your eyes open, horrible. And then you score pretty good with your eyes closed because really it's just too much information coming into your brain from your eyes that you, it overloads the system and even affects your balance. So of course I have everybody spin. So they do their pretest. I don't know what their scores are, neither do they. They spin for their five minutes, they get back on the gear, and now it resets. So now they score quite good with their eyes open and a lesser score with their eyes closed. And I'm the only one really talking about balance and ADHD, but I'm the only person really putting the two in the same group of a brain injury and ADHD are, are kind of in the same group when we look at their physical balance and, and how their brain is processing. And both are struggling with too much information through their eyes. So it, it's really exciting work. We're doing some research projects coming up. That's, a that's bunch exciting. Of I'm a bunch <laughs> coming up. Um, and it'll, it'll be really fun to see all of these published forward because I think that we're going to look at ADHD a lot different for children and how to treat it without... Ch yeah, you know, like chiclets of Adderall, you know, the poor kids yeah. are all these drugs. Yes. And that's, ugh, it just breaks my heart. And so to be able to help the children in just five minutes, once a day, and, and of course, we love all the gear in every single school to really have one unit can help a 1000 kids. So oh, wow, let's do that. Uh, but let, let's get all these kids on the gear. And really yes help that whole vestibular settle but with with your balance settling and your brain calming down it allows you to do all these other things and and i guess my one other example of that is always if you look at 
if you look at balance, and I was talking about it's it's your core piece of your human is your balance. And when your balance is great, it's like a low running app. You know, like it's an app on my phone that it doesn't give me any hassle. My balance is great. It's no hassle. But as I age and as I have a concussion and as as that balance gets worse and worse, the app starts taking up more and more and more space that it doesn't allow your brain to do other things, you know, because it's, mm -hmm. it's just a struggle. In my example, I was when I shattered my ankle and spent six months in a non-weight bearing cast. Oh, my God. I was so awful. I was a horrible human being. Horrible, horrible human being because every everything was work. You know, it was so much work to get to the bathroom or get food or, oh, stairs, there's stairs. Ah, you know, I'd freak out. Like, there's stairs. I can't handle this. You know, so um, the day that my cast came off and they gave me a walking cast, I was like, hi, I'm Sheila Thielen. I don't know where I've been the last few <laughs> months, but I feel so much better. Uh, Back to being a human again, you know? <laughs> you're free. Yes, yes. <laughs> It was great, you know, so yeah. but these little pieces of balance are just such key parts of our life. And like I said, when it's working great, it's great. But when it's not working well, it just affects your whole life. And even that emotional regulation, um, which is one of the things we really see with the children, is that nice emotional regulation after having worked with us. Oh, we need it. Please bring bring us to our, our high school, Delta High School. We would love to have you here. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah! Anytime you want to go to Oklahoma, you're welcome to stop by Tahlequah. We'll we'll make our own welfare <laughs> and have you you know teach us how to help our, our kids. Right, that so would be I amazing. People, yeah, I always tell people like, yeah, I'm a teenage girl specialist, and they're like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, oh no, no, it's great because because my girls aren't normal girls. Mine are elite athletes, but. The other piece of vestibular too that's also tied to it, the, the three big things we always talk about are, of course, balance, cognitive mm -hmm. processing speed, and non-spatial disorientation. I mean, we talk about those okay. all the time. Yet, there's another piece to it too, and that's better sleep. So, of course, if you get better sleep, you have better emotional regulation, which I think just makes sense, you know, so so that there's a nice tie to that for both children and adults that better sleep is really important for your brain. And the cognitivity part, you said there are kids that have been in learning like reading plans and then they go to you, they go, they do the, I, I call it therapy, might not be therapy, the training, you know, the vestibular training, and then they're back to, you know, their optimal reading level. So I was like, that's amazing how the cognitivity also plays a, a benefit in this training. It, it really ties together. And so, and I have so many anecdotal stories of children that, <laughs> and the weird one is when we work with a lot of children. So one of the things we talk about, which I dominant are you? Have you done that before? Of which I dominant are you? you just make a frame and you look through with both eyes, you center, a, like, <laughs> you close your right eye, you close your left eye, and then which eye is it centered on? You know, for, so for me, it's my right eye. Like you hold mm -hmm. your head still, just look through it. Don't move your head. Yeah. Hold your head still. Oh. <laughs> and which eye was it centered on? At my uh, right eye. Yeah, most people are right eye dominant. But it's the same thing that there's an ear dominance. And that one is kind of a weird one. I always talk about like, okay, just lean in. I have a secret. And I'm which in ear room. would you lean in <laughs> with? You know, and you know, I have a secret. And people always lean in and I'm like, okay, okay, no, you don't really have to lean in. Just, just, just tell me which ear you're going to listen with. And for a lot of children, and this isn't always, but no, a lot of children, my kids in reading programs and, and struggling students are going to lean in with their left ear. Whereas my kids not in reading programs um, and my kids really doing really well in academics will lean in with their right ear. So we started a program to just force the children to rotate only counterclockwise, trying to put that right ear okay. on the axis to kind of force them mm -hmm. get onto that right ear okay. balance. And mm -hmm. so we just moved them only counterclockwise. And that was the only direction we let them turn um, on all of the gear. And, uh, and the fascinating part is children that presented as reading programs, dyslexic, 
just struggling kids, you know, my ADHD kids, um, especially at four, five, six, and seven years old, then we did this whole year program of just only turning counterclockwise. And the children um, are out of those reading programs. Um, several of them are now number one in their class. Yay. And I'm like, oh, look at that, you know. Yes, they're changing lives. Right, but am I the only factor? Probably not. But but it's all part of the factor of getting that right ear dominance is really important. So where can, we, like if there's anybody here in our audience, we have people from all over the world. So where can we find this, you know, training? Where can we go to and what's the price range that we need to plan on spending? Okay, all right. So unfortunately, it's not is free and low price at this point is what we'd like. But the good news is I just signed an agreement, although it's I can't tell you who yet, but you'll know in the next six months. Okay, <laughs> okay. Six months from now, there'll be a huge announcement. Uh, we're teaming up with a huge fitness company here in the United States with a little about 200 locations. And um, they are really one of the best companies in the country. And I'm so honored to work with them. But you'll be able to work out your body and your brain in the same location. So they're going to put in neuro labs in all of their okay. locations, actually in old racquetball courts, which cracks me up because nobody plays racquetball anymore. So they're going to turn into neuro labs <laughs> that people will be okay. able to use. But... Oh, just just give me just a little bit more time and I'll have that answer for you. Okay. So, so can you come back in six months? Yes. And we'll interview you we'll and then you'll give us the big news. Where can we go? <laughs> exactly. So it, it, it is a yeah. huge nationwide company and, and they really are um, phenomenal in the work that they do and their commitment to this new neuro training lab. Actually, their That's CEO nice. came and trained with me. So their CEO ah. came in and was like, okay. I want this. And I'm like, Let's go. <laughs> yes. So, so the gear in general, I always talk about how one unit can help a thousand children, you know, and so the price of just the, the platter and the harness that you can lift the children with, that runs mm -hmm. about $12,995. Okay. And then, so like for physical therapists or PTs or schools, once again, like one unit can really help hundreds and hundreds of children. Uh, the rail system runs $16,995. But the nice thing about this one is there's there's really no excuses because you don't need to hook into a ceiling system. You just plug it in, which has actually made my life so nice for like demos and events. And, and I really just need to plug in and I'm ready to go. So I can demo that, that harness anywhere, you know, which is really, really handy. Um, even at like conferences and trade shows, there are a lot of times in hotels. And so I'm like, hi, Marriott, can I hook up into your ceiling? And they're like, no, <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't hook up into our ceiling. So uh, we also, the rail system, now just a plug into the wall and you're ready to go. So, I mean, this is fascinating. I love, I love everything you're sharing with us. It, to me, it's just a blessing to let the world know there is vestibular training for anyone that is an athlete that wants to be faster, for anyone that is in rehab that had a concussion, a stroke, anyone that's in the military, anyone that might have, you know, a family member that has autism, that has sensory issues, aging, you know, I'm thinking my parents, I'm thinking, you know, myself is like, what a blessing just to go for five minutes, be trained, feel balanced, sleep better. Uh, cognitivity, you know, is like, wow. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your knowledge. It, it, it's easy. It's fun. Um, there's a nice dopamine load. Uh, and it's been really fun for us to apply to what I call like real life situations. You know, so one of our projects has actually been working um, with uh, some police departments here in Minnesota, where um, this is so fun. This is like, real world, which I think is important when we talk about training, like real world situations, that the officers went and shot at the range first. And then they came and worked with me and they did my balance mat. They spun for five minutes. They went back to the balance mat and they all 100% improved their balance. 
to the point it's almost not that big a challenge to me anymore to improve people's balance because I can. It like 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 it's gotten like oh yeah I can do that no problem yeah <laughs> that's easy you know so yeah so I improve their balance that's great then they go back to the gun range and reshoot and the interesting part is the range master who scores it has no clue what they've done in between. And the range masters, I was like, why are you back again? They're like, we're here to reshoot. And they're like, why? I just scored you this morning. And they're like, we're here to reshoot. And the chief is here. And, and so is the lieutenant. And everyone's here watching this poor guy <laughs> shoot. And um, so far, uh, 100% of my police officers have significantly improved their shooting scores after having done vestibular training. And one of them had been trying to qualify for SWAT for a year. And how they do it is it's a normal shooting score, but then they, for SWAT, they move you back like 20 feet and he couldn't pass the test. And he did that day. So I, so I talk about, um, I haven't seen him for a while because he's on SWAT, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Night shift. Yeah, poor guy. So, so like all of these things are like real world, how balance affects us. And these are the parts that I think are super important in how we can help so many people. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Especially mobility. Think of our, you know, thinking of being in your 50s and 60s and not being able to, you know, miss the movement of when you were 30 in your 30s or 20s, being able to have that back like your mom. I know every time people that goes to Europe is like they walk and they walk and they, you know, look at beautiful things and they walk some more. So at 70, being able to do that for three weeks, that's impressive. Yeah, she did so well, you know, so, so the, but these are the parts of like, to, to prolong the life. And you know, and once your aunties and your mom and your grandma, once they fall and break that hip, or just even the fear of they've fallen several times and now they're afraid to leave the house and they're afraid to grocery shop or they always have to hold on to something, you know. But then that sometimes makes the fall even worse because then more things are falling at the same time. So I really look at how we can help all of those people really help that balance last just even a couple more years longer to make their lives better. How do you do it all? Because I know you have children. I know you're married and you're running this beautiful con uh, company with 300 em employees or some, you know, around that many. So <laughs> teach us, how do you do it for anyone out there that is, you know, feeling hesitant about following in their dreams because they think that it's just no way you can do it all or accomplish, you know, the main things in your life? Well, I'm going to say, of course, I'm obsessed with this. Like, I think that's obvious. It's, okay, it's, it's obvious. She's obsessed with this. Whole thing. <laughs> but and I joke that my family is so sick of me, you know? <laughs> We're like, let's talk about this. All I want to do, it's all I want to talk about. We go to family events and here's me talking about it. My family's like, shut up, you know? Like, <laughs> Um, so, of course, my family, I'm going to say, too, have been vital in helping me through the process. And my husband is an amazing technical writer. So he really helped me with a lot of the technical papers and in a way that I talk about. I've lost my technical writing skills. I kind of more like social media right now. Like, yeah. oh, life's great. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. And, and tell us how long have you guys been married? Uh, we just celebrated our 30th wedding anniversary. And so, so we, joke, we joke, everyone bet against us at the wedding, like including <laughs> our own family. And, and years ago, I, I asked one of my bridesmaids, I'm like, so how much money changed hands? <laughs> and she's like, oh, that money was gone years ago. Nobody bet more than five years. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, we're fine. We've been doing this forever. But, but that's part of our big picture too, of, of course, family and and we really have a lovely company with um amazing manufacturers everything's made here in the states and i really am honored to work with our entire staff because they're really phenomenal people and and i'm so i'm so grateful for all the opportunities that i've had even within this company you know because we do training and we get to travel and we get to go places and i i got to go to australia last year you know like uh, 
yeah, my life's really hard. Like, feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you're you're but, saying <laughs> you were saying that you were teaching kids how to skate in in Mexico, and I know you've been to Russia and probably all over the world. To Russia, I haven't done Russia yet, but that'd be okay. a really fun one. That'd be really fun. But I've done. Oh my gosh, we did Europe, and I've taught throughout the states. I actually have Alaska in two weeks. I'm, I'm leaving for Alaska to go do five day seminar there. So, I, like, we really travel and we do a lot of work. But in the same sense, you know, it's a perfect example of it takes a whole team to, to really achieve these goals, and and it's friendships and it's networking. And and I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. Like, I I always go nuts over like I love LinkedIn. <laughs> Because it's, it's a lot of professionals and, and people that really give their time and have been very good to me. And on LinkedIn is where I actually met the head neuroscientist for NASA. I mean, and, and he contacted me. Like, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. But like, my family was impressed with that one, you know. <laughs> and I don't know if they're impressed with some of the other things, but NASA was so really you're, cool. You're not afraid. That's what you're telling us. It's like, you're not afraid to knock on the, you know, knock on the door. I, I, I'm not afraid of a cold call. Like I cold call people all the time, you know, and I email people all the time and LinkedIn on messages and, and I'll really look at who's leading a project and really try and connect with them. Uh, I, I don't know that I have a lot of fear. And in the funny part, I'm super short. I'm like four foot 10. Like I'm super, <laughs> super short. I sound like a squirrel. Okay. But, um, I, I think I don't look scary. So people are willing to work with me because I don't look intimidating. And then they meet me and then they're like, whoa, this girl. Whoa. You know? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm already in the door. So it's too late. I'm in now. Here I am. Now, you have a phenomenal personality. You know, like I I reach out to you. You're very you know, super friendly, very down to earth and very easy to work with. I do have to say that. And I'm grateful for you. You're so sweet. But, you know, I think it's working with children, though, too. Like when you work with kids, you you got to you have to have more energy than they do. And you have to be stronger than they are <laughs> if you work with children. And, and I talk about like I still do. I, we call it trenches coaching. I still work with four year olds, six year olds. You know, mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, a kid bit me. You know, like I still work <laughs> in the trenches of teaching and and I. Mm -hmm. Still love it. I still love working with kids. I still love working with the projects. I, mean, I could do it all day long. I, I do, but I enjoy every minute of it. But I think that's important for all of us to look at um, at our lives and our children and our careers and our spouses to really enjoy the process and really enjoy every day of it. That those are words of wisdom because the majority of the population just want to be there. And I was like, I just want to be there. And I just cannot believe that I'm not there yet. <laughs> but you're you're inviting us to it is possible and enjoy the process. And your attitude says it all. Absolutely. And of course, everyone will be like, oh, she was an overnight success. Oh, my gosh. No, 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 no. Not an overnight success. Um, if anything, mass chaos through the whole process. <laughs> um, and you know, like these the three years that we've had this expansion, I love the company before, like I love the coaching and more of the sports world. But as we move into this this last three year project of really expanding, I I have really enjoyed every minute of it. And and it's been slow. I'm, I'm going to say there's been some really slow days. And then there were the, the worst days actually were the days that had 11 Zoom calls in one day. And at one point, I'm like, I think I picked up an eye switch. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh. The answer is not 11 Zoom calls a day, but I'm a huge, huge fan of a side hustle of something you really care about that really can expand and grow. What has been the most challenging thing you could share with us that you it's, overcame? It, well, I always talk about I'm coachable, but you know, in the same sense, I was so uncoachable about the expansion. So, I mean, a lot of people were like, no, no, stay in your lane. You're super successful just in figure skating. Just stay there. You know, you, you make a lot of money. It's great. You have a product. You're, you know, you're number one, you know, like just stay there. And the idea that we could do more in more sports, much less the general population, uh, people didn't think I could do it. And, and I'm just standing here 
and and can I really do it in the end? I don't know, but eventually I can hire some more help. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing I mean, you are doing it. You are here spreading the word saying, hey, anybody that I didn't know, you know, and I know my family can benefit from this 100 percent. And that's to me, that's a blessing. Another I thing. Keep, I keep going back to this. It's all about this. This nice little the vestibular, vestibular system. system. Yes. And you, I mean, I think it's a passion for skating as well, because I know you you develop a like there were cords that you would train your your you know your your beautiful students <laughs> was that your first invention well, this is my first invention so my first invention hey. i got a u.s patent for uh, i also got a patent for those spinning systems too yeah i got that but um which was fascinating um but um it started out with just a bungee cord that hooks onto the athlete's foot and then the cord that went up to their hand and they put two of them on and they looked like puppets is what they looked like yeah but it engaged all your muscles in a way that children don't know how to engage their muscles so yeah so this is my first forage into business was a bungee cord and a clip we call them champion cords and, and i always talk about it's my favorite little company because i put no effort into it i don't even think the facebook page is current okay like I, i'm not sure i put much effort into it like none and they they just sell every week every week there's shipments going out <laughs> that so is champion, awesome. yeah so but like i started small but i started with a small business and then that got bigger and that got bigger and then i started into harnesses and spinners and and we just really started expanding and it just kind of um in business they also call it a funnel system so you you buy a couple of our small products and then you buy bigger and bigger and bigger projects from us they they call it a funnel uh in the business world and, and so we've got lots of little products that lead the big products there's that rail system um and it's really been um it, it's been a, a lot of lessons in business did you always had a business mindset or did you learn to, to I think I know, learned it navigate? Along. Yeah, well, like I learned it along the way. Um, I do have a college degree. I have a double major from Hamlin University in communications and anthropology, archaeology with an emphasis in bone research. So I actually worked as an archaeologist right out of college uh -huh. in Israel. Loved it. Um, I'm a language failure, so I, I didn't do so well. <laughs> I really um, never learned a second language. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm a <laughs> failure. All of you that can speak multiple languages, I'm so jealous. Anyway, um, but I, I came back to the States and got married and had children. And my one other little twist was my my son was um, he could hold his breath till he passed out. So he was a sickly child till he was about four Um, because he passed out like 12 times a day. You know, like this kid just passed out all over the place and stopped breathing and nobody would babysit for me, um, not even my family. So I had to be creative in early business it, as all young moms have to be to balance the children, the job, the income, the husband and, and a sickly child who then perked up. He's he's fine now, you know, but <laughs> we had some. We had some rough years in there in early parenting. So whenever people tell me they have young children, I'm always like, you okay? Yeah, how you doing? You know, do you need a babysitter? You know, yeah. you need a night off, you know, like, yeah. so Yeah. But we really, it, it was hard in the early years, but now I just look at life now. It's just so easy compared to those early parenting years. Wow. That, I mean, it definitely moved you to, be inspired and very creative and look at you now it's been so fun so yeah so you know nothing like a rotational electric <laughs> but we can speed it up and we can slow it down and we can go left and we can go right and and all of those little pieces just really filter through your brain and that vestibular system really makes change so if anybody that was watching us are thinking, oh, what if I buy the machine? Do you guys do the training mm -hmm. Is it through Zoom, so, I'm guessing? Yeah, so a lot of our people just choose Zoom training because it's very easy gear to run. I, I have eight-year-olds that run this gear for their parents. It's it's oh. very, very easy gear to run. So I, we do a lot of Zoom training. 
um, in the same sense. And, you know, like money is different to everyone. And I, I just kind of money is different to everyone. So I do talk about how um, half our sales go into people's homes, which is great. That That's wonderful. I helped out the family of four, some neighbor kids, a grandparent. It's it's I'm totally thrilled with that. Um, yet at the same time, once again, getting in with a, a PT, an OT, a doctor, um, a chiropractor, a community center, a school, one, one para can run this. And with it, the children could even help each other on it, you know, in, in trade places and really connect. Um, there's something special about holding that rope. It's, it's almost like a belay in in rock climbing that, that you really, there's a trust and then there's a connection that people really make while they're on the gear. And so with that, that one unit could help hundreds and hundreds of people. So so yeah, we always talk about like, it's great to have sales, That's that's nice. But that's really not the focus of the company. The focus is to really have one unit help hundreds and hundreds of people with one unit. And and I always talk about like, I don't care about the money. Um, I care enough to make payroll. I, I do care about the money to make payroll. I got to make payroll. So my employees don't kill me. But in the same sense, after I make payroll every month, I just I just don't care. You know, I like, like okay, let, let's do something crazy. Let's do this and this and this. And people are like, but what if it doesn't make money? And I'm like, I, I don't care. We're going to go change the world and we're going to help a lot of kids. That's what I care about. So so we even have gear in Mumbai. Um, <laughs> which you have gear gear in, in Dubai? No, Mumbai. Mumbai. Well, okay. Translate for me, please. Yeah, Mumbai, India. Like kind of the center. Oh, okay. Of okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's just like really need some help. You know, like, okay, you know, like, um, and I just Zoom trained them in okay. India, you know, and it all yeah. worked out. Like, we're really good at time zones, okay. and it all worked out. And we got to work with kids in Mumbai, and we have gear in the UK, and we have gear here in the States, you know, kind of all kind of sporadic. Um, and so, and unfortunately, so much of it is in people's homes that it's in private homes. So I can't send you to someone's house, you know? So oh, okay. yeah. but, but as we're all, we're only six months away from in the, so many places. Um, <laughs> and in Minnesota, of course, our own backyard, uh, even in December, there'll be a big grand opening here in the Twin Cities that people will really have a lot more access to it. Uh, that is amazing. And I see that your creativity, you are continuing to bring even more, right? Cause it's like, let's do, <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do that. I can see your brain still like I know. trying to come up with something better. <laughs> so many evil plans. Yes, we're already in process of you know like version one, version two, uh, version three is already in the works. You know, they'll be even easier. So yeah, so so these are all the little pieces that that just make. Um, my my chief medical officer calls it plug and play. You know, you just do plug this and for play. The yeah. Plug and play, just do this for the first five minutes and go do all the other things you would normally do. And then it just, you can just add it in. It's fun. And off they go to all the other projects. So uh, we get to work with a lot of pro athletes and we get to work with a lot of children and we get to work with, you know, people that um, I, I got to work with some stroke patients, you know, like how important and, and how much. Um, not only just for them, but for their families. Yeah. And and I just think that's really what, what drives this company and what drives our entire staff. Uh, we have we have a chief medical officer. We have the head of our Ph.D. research department that coordinates all of our research papers. All Everybody's on the same page. And the idea that we can change the world and not sound crazy for making that one of the company goals is to change the world. It we're we're excited in our, in our own little happy little squirrel delusion that we're gonna do it we can do it let's do it <laughs> that's amazing so did you get to work with nasa i know you say you you got in, uh you contact that director of nasa and so, so yeah so i got to work with the head neuroscientist at nasa who added us into a presentation uh three huge international presentations and and i don't know how much more because like so much of it is i can't see it. So I don't know what's going on. You know, like it's yeah. kind of like dealing with the military. You, you don't always know what's going on. 
you would <laughs> tell you what to do. So I got to be part of, um, he used a lot of my videos um, and especially the, the two main videos on our website that you'll see of the girls spinning crazy in the gear. And with that, oh my goodness, you know, he talked about like dizzy astronauts and trying to get to Mars and in being able to not have someone to care for them when they land in, at Mars, you know, and, and their vestibular. Mm -hmm. And if you think about living in a gyroscope for months and months, yeah. of course, when you hit gravity, any gravity, and that brain hits gravity, you can imagine, it's almost like the spinning teacups at Disney World. You know, when you see those spinning teacups, you're like, I, I, I don't want to do, <laughs> you know, like kids, you I don't. Know, Yourself. I can't do that. But imagine being in space and that weightlessness looks so cool until you really think about it and think about what that's really doing to the human physiology for the muscles and the brain to be floating like that. So uh, we we look forward to doing more projects with NASA, but it's it, it, was, it was amazing to be a part of their of several amazing presentations by one of their directors. Wow. Where can we find you? Anybody here in our audience is like, I want to watch those videos. I want to learn more from but, Shayla. Or oh gosh, I'm I'm all over like LinkedIn, and I'm all over. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, which I'm probably the most visible at. Of course, we have the YouTube channel, uh, which is you know Sheila Thielen and Vestibular Training Services. Uh, all of this is is really easy to find us. We're on Instagram, Vestibular Training Services, Facebook. It, it's all out there. Come join us. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Please, before you go, you know, if there is anyone out there in the audience hesitant to make the first step because they know they can change the world, but they don't believe in themselves, what would you tell them? You can. Let's go. Like, like step forward. Be brave. Um, I want to hand you some bravery. Just here, take it. <laughs> here, here, here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, it. it's yours. And no. these are the pieces that, that we all can change the world around us. But really, the opportunity to work with children and improve their lives is, is an honor. And we can do more for the children of the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time, your wisdom and all your research and hard work. Thank you for thank this you. opportunity. <laughs> thank you. I'll send you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you all to our beautiful audience this, that's here with us. This show can also be heard in Spanglish Radio Network. Please check out SpanglishWorld.ca for all news and programming. Spanglish World, watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and live it. Blessings, blessings, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>